Hello, welcome to another edition of the COVID-19 Response and Recovery Task Force Virtual Town Hall. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Michael Beck, the Administrative Vice Chancellor and Co-Chair of the Task Force. I'm joined here today by my Task Force Co-Chair, Michael Morans, Professor of History and past Chair of the Academic Senate. With us today to help field your questions are four members of the Task Force. Uh, Joe Bristow, who's the Co-Chair of the Reinventing the UCLA Workplace of the Future Work Group, the former Chair of the UCLA Academic Senate, and, and a distinguished professor of English. We have Rene Fortier, uh, who's the Executive Director of Events and Transportation and, a chair of the, and the Chair of the Operational Response Working Group. Luby Levin, who's the Associate Vice Chancellor for Campus Human Resources and the Co-Chair of the Reinventing the UCLA Workplace of the Future Working Group, as well as Michelle Sityar, who is the Executive Officer for Environmental Health and Safety and uh, very much involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, issues and policies associated with the uh, response and recovery for the campus. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items to go over. The town hall will be recorded and available on the UCLA YouTube channel later today and accessible via the UCLA COVID-19 website. We appreciate all the questions we have received from these town halls. Uh, for answers to questions we are not able to get to during the town hall, they will be posted on the UCLA COVID-19 website. For those participating via Zoom, uh, uh, and may have other questions, please use the Q&A function, uh, not the chat function. For those that are, uh, we're planning on tuning in via the YouTube channel, there's been a late, unfortunately, a late change to the YouTube address. So those that do go to the YouTube channel uh, will be able to get the redirection link. And for those that uh, we're planning on doing that and maybe reach out to those of you that are on the Zoom link or otherwise found the link. Uh, please feel free to uh, let them know that the redirection is appropriate to be able to listen uh, for today. Now it is my sincere pleasure to introduce a special guest who would like to share a few words. I'm grateful for the compassionate leadership Chancellor Block has exhibited during the pandemic. He has continued to prioritize the health, safety, and welfare of our students, faculty, and staff. This is a rare trait in organizational leaders, and we are fortunate to have him leading the campus at this time. Chancellor, welcome to the town hall, and I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you, Michael, and thanks to our faculty and staff for joining today. So it goes without saying that this has been an incredibly difficult year. And I wanna thank all of you for persevering, you know, enormous challenges that everyone has faced. But I believe, and I, I'm sure you share my belief that we're really in the home stretch now. You know, if LA continues its recovery and our community is vaccinated, you know, we'll definitely have students and faculty back here in the fall. So we're very hopeful that that, that will happen. Uh, we'll also wanna welcome back, of course, many of our staff who support our campus activities although some will have to keep working remotely as we keep density low, a campus density low. So this is still gonna be a recovery next year and certainly the fall won't look, uh, won't look completely normal, but we're hopeful that many people will be back. So I'm eager to see many of you on campus again and uh, it's been a long stretch now, we'd all love to get back. But even as we emerge from this pandemic, you know, we're keeping in mind that we've learned a good deal about remote work this past year. This has been an extraordinary experiment uh, that we've actually done during this pandemic. And we found it, it can be effective. Uh, it can give our employees flexibility and it can help many with work-life balance, not, not commuting, and allows us to start thinking about how we can use space on campus uh, more effectively. Uh, there's really gonna be some advantages to having some of the workforce working at home. And it goes without saying the extraordinary environmental benefit of not having thousands of, you know, thousands of fewer cars headed to Westwood each day, it, it, it can have an impact. So there are benefits to remote work. And I think we've learned a lot more about it this, this past year. So we're trying to find ways to ensure employees can do their work well at home uh, effectively. And that has been uh, an ongoing study that's been, as, as I said, been going on this entire year. So we're trying to figure out how best to support this new way of working. It's new for all of us and uh, we're learning along the way. And today's town hall speakers will discuss this in more detail. So we'll get some insights about what we've been learning. So again, I wanna thank all of you for tuning in today, you know, stay safe 
get vaccinated, of course, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks again for everything you do for UCLA. Take care. Thank you, Chancellor Block, for joining us today and for your strong leadership during this challenging time in UCLA's history. I'm pleased to report that the COVID-19 case rates in LA County continue to decline. And as a result, the county is now in the orange tier of the state blueprint for a safer economy. And you're seeing more relaxing of restrictions in the county and, and on campus. Unfortunately, we have been experiencing increased case rates on the campus, which is believed to be primarily a result of spring break travel and March Madness viewing parties, go Bruins, uh, but maybe go Bruins in a safer fashion. Uh, this is a vivid reminder that the virus is still very much present in our community and on our campus and adherence to public health guidelines and is critical if we are going to be able to have a summer and fall that more closely represents a normal campus population. Before we turn to our presenters, I want to mention that we're not ready today uh, to present a final roadmap for ramping up on uh, site, on-site teaching, learning, and working. We are currently planning to have about 80% of our courses taught in person in the fall with as close to full occupancy in our campus housing as possible. This should come as a welcome change for most and may uh, raise questions and concerns for others. Uh, we're continuing to consider a, a vaccine mandate for the fall. So that should be something everybody should be planning uh, to consider as a way uh, to try and keep uh, the campus uh, safer in the fall as, as we ramp up to a higher density. Our presentations today will review the various options being considered for how we might engage work this summer and in the fall. We are st still interested in reducing the density on uh, in, ca in campus offices, and we will be encouraging employees who can continue to work remotely to do so uh, full-time or in a, a split schedule where they uh, might trade off with other employees working from home uh, and working in the office. We believe that for many, this new way of working will go beyond the pandemic and become our future of working. Determining which employees will work from home uh, and in the office or in a split mode will be up to each unit on how to implement. Our presenters today will provide an overview of the options being considered for how we might implement future work options. Their work is not yet complete, but they, uh, we'll share the concepts being developed to support uh, departments and employees as they consider how to manage work options as they develop their departmental resumption plans. It is now my pleasure to turn to the co-chairs of the Reinventing the UCLA Workplace of the Future work group, distinguished professor of English and former chair of the Academic Senate, Joe Bristow, and associate vice chancellor for Campus Human Resources, Luby Levin. They will present an update on their work. So, uh, take it away. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael, and thank you, Chancellor Block. Um, things are certainly becoming more optimistic, uh, which is good news. And I just want to reiterate before I, I embark on this presentation, I will be talking to you for the next uh, seven to 10 minutes, and then my colleague Luby Levin will be taking over the final portion of our presentation about our working group. Um, it's just to make it very clear to everybody that we um, are not working at the moment with uh, a fixed schedule or timeline in mind. Um, we are developing ideas about, and we actually are very, very far along that path, um, we're developing a framework for understanding and for implementing and for offering guidance and principles of a framework we are calling FlexWork. And let me explain how this will operate. So what I'm gonna do is share the screen. Those of us who've been working with Zoom know that it can be a little bit temperamental at times, but if I can do this, it should work. And if I can go to the beginning of my slide, first slide, I think we should be fine. Can everybody see that? We're doing fine, okay. So um, our Workplace of the Future Working Group began its deliberations and its work in December. And since uh, the beginning of the calendar year, we've been meeting on a bi-weekly basis and Luby and I are the co-chairs and it's a great honor to work with Luby. Um, in the past, I've worked very closely with uh, Campus Human Resources. 
Um, this is the makeup of our group so that all colleagues um, from the campus can see that we're drawn from different parts, different units and different areas. So there's myself and Luby, there's Lucy Abatissian, who's our Chief Information Officer, Kevin Baldwin, who's a former Staff Assembly um, President um, who works in UCLA Health IT, Reem Hannah Harwell, the Assistant Dean of the Humanities, and of course, Reem is in the college, Mary Aquino, who's the Chief of Staff to Vice Chancellor Roger Wakimoto, Nancy Velasquez, who's the um, CAO in Labor and Employment Institute, and Nancy is one of our most experienced managers, and similarly, Stephen Yu, who's the CAO and the CFO in the School of Law. So we have a great deal of expertise to draw on in our working group. Um, this is our charge to assess the ways in which our working lives have been transformed during the pandemic. They assuredly have been transformed. Now, we, we realize that um, a high percentage of the workforce has been able to work effectively in the remote environment. We also need to acknowledge that there has been a portion of colleagues who found um, the experience very, very stressful, given that we, I just want to make this very, very clear. We fully acknowledge that remote working has brought about certain stresses and strains for, for colleagues and certainly for our students. And, um, you know, we've lost loved ones. Uh, we've had family pressures. There have been the difficulties of homeschooling. We understand all of that. One of the things, however, that has come up in surveys is how remarkably well a quite high proportion of our workforce has been able to continue operations and be very productive. Now, the question is, when we're looking forward to a de-densified um, campus, not everybody is going to be back in offices in the future, and there will be very clear guidelines which will be issued, no doubt, by the LA County Public Health Department. We're gonna to have to be spaced apart from one another. We're gonna to have to think very carefully about how many people can be in certain buildings. So to what degree can we continue to support remote work? Let me be clear, we are not suggesting a one um, size fits all model for each and every unit. Each and every unit has different needs. We're respecting that. Um, but we do believe that uh, remote working, which used to be called telecommuting a lot of the time, um, is going to be a very, very important component in the ways in which the university continues its operations into the foreseeable future. So what kinds of flexible working arrangements can be put in place? Um, telecommuting, or what we're calling more and more remote working, is a part of flex work. And we are developing guidelines and principles relating to flex work for a safe and successful return to campus. And um, I should point out that we have already submitted to EBCP Carter um, an interim report. Um, it's fairly substantial and we have a much longer document which is developing principles and guidelines. Now, the majority of our workforce has conducted our operations remotely for more than a year. And as I pointed out, some members have experienced a range of challenges. But what's been interesting, and this reiterates points that Chancellor Block made earlier this, um, earlier this afternoon, um, it's been uh, really very striking how many colleagues have felt very confident about working efficiently in a remote context. There have been benefits, including relief from the long commutes that many of us have to endure or historically endured in Los Angeles, more control over our use of time and a strong work-life balance. And the most appreciated benefit for many colleagues, and this has come out of many surveys, has been flexibility. Now, nationwide surveys show the following. Um, increased productivity. This is linking really the, the, the UCLA experience with national trends, lower absenteeism, improved morale because of a strong work-life balance and reduced commuting time, and enhanced recruitment opportunities. Let me talk about flex work. It's shorthand for embracing um, a whole range or an ensemble of different kinds of flexible working arrangements that are alternatives to the eight hour in-person office-based daily schedules that were the norm in many units prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, not all jobs, we have to acknowledge this, will in the future lend themselves to flex work opportunities. 
many on-site jobs will require 100% presence on campus. Um, but FlexWork has various aspects to it that will support once employees and managers can talk about this and think about agreements which will um, accommodate flex work, it will support a de-densified and a safer work environment. Um, so how is flex work different from previous arrangements? Well, in the past, there have been various opportunities historically at UCLA for flexible scheduling, like 940s, telecommuting, and so on and so forth. But what FlexWork is going to do is provide employees with opportunities. It won't affect everybody, but we're hoping that we can optimize as many of these opportunities for a maximum number of employees on campus. And these opportunities will include staggered shifts, alternate work schedules, job sharing, and full-time or part-time remote working. And later today, Rene Fortier will talk about the ways in which we can have smooth schedules in particular units, which will assist considerably with optimizing op operations and also making quite sure that we do have a safe physical environment in which to conduct our work on campus. The other thing about flex work I'd want to really emphasize is that it's not a mandate, it's not going to be imposed on anybody, nor is it a privilege. I think it's fair to say that in the past, telecommuting was sometimes seen, sometimes seen as a, as a privilege. Well, it's not a privilege. We see flex work as an opportunity that de um, depending on the nature of the work and the ways in which hybrid approaches might be viable. And I think I need to uh, turn over to you, Luby. Thank you very much, uh, Joe. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. And it's been a true pleasure to work with Joe and the other members of our work group. Uh, we've done a lot of creative thinking and we're very close to developing recommendations that we hope will be helpful uh, to all of you. Uh, as mentioned, we're currently in transition to a new work environment. And I wanna mention that the studies that have been con conducted nationwide show that at least 40% of the jobs in the United States uh, can be carried out remotely. So UCLA is no exception. Uh, many of you have asked if you can continue to work remotely. Um, and as Joe mentioned, we're relying heavily on departments and units to determine how effectively that can be achieved. Uh, some jobs will continue full-time or part-time uh, remote work, uh, other positions do require a presence on the campus. And then there are also opportunities for hybrid approaches. And I know Renee will talk uh, more specifically about what some of that will look like. So the answer is yes. Um, and I think into the long-term future, uh, we are really changing and making a dramatic uh, move uh, towards a different kind of work environment retaining hopefully the collaboration and interactions that UCLA um, finds so important and as the chancellor discussed, but I think we will also have some new work patterns, different work schedules for many jobs and have new uh, opportunities uh, to develop the work-life uh, balance. So we have a couple of recommendations to share with you. Uh, we think it's really important uh, that the process be handled effectively. Uh, and in our um, slide, we are suggesting that the work flex, the flex work idea be integrated into the units. Uh, and again, it's not one size fits all, but managers and supervisors uh, will be challenged to have input from employees to determine what kinds of options work the best. And I wanna emphasize also that equity uh, in terms of providing these opportunities is going to be a critical feature. Uh, employees um, face very different individual circumstances, uh, whether they have family and children at home with the reopening of the schools, that's gonna alleviate a lot of the pressure um, on our employees, but we also need to consider individual circumstances, uh, the need for accommodation, 
and working effectively as, as a team. So on the next slide, we mentioned some of the challenges. Um, obviously, uh, we want to encourage um, this, the opportunity for employees to provide input uh, and to be part of the decision-making process. We are suggesting that flex work arrangements, and we will have a checklist with uh, issues to address to do that. We wanna start with a short-term approach. Uh, perhaps some units will want to phase in the flex work opportunities. And, and this is important because of the environment obviously has been changing rapidly. And while we wanna make sure that our key job duties and performance goals are achieved, we also need to take into account that creation of this new environment will bring with it some additional complexity. So we want managers and supervisors to be creative about it uh, and the flexibility that our approach will allow will make it possible to experiment with approaches, to take a look at what's working, what isn't working, and to make adjustments when needed. On the next slide, um, health and safety continue to be critical uh, factors. And we mean that not only for work that is done on site, uh, but also flex work. Uh, for people working at home, we need to assure that uh, they have the proper uh, equipment, information about how to create a, an effective and healthy workplace. Um, fortunately, uh, we're also working very closely with our colleagues in risk management, uh, in a disability management unit, um, in employee um, health and safety issues, and we will have more information available. So uh, we want to assure that health and safety continue to be important features, whether employees are working from home or on the campus. And um, finally, the, in terms of resilience and compassion, um, as Chancellor Block indicated, this is a time when we need to show compassion for colleagues uh, and make sure that we have the resources and tools available to meet their needs. Uh, there are a lot of surveys being conducted nationally. Uh, there is a lot of concern uh, about psychological and emotional well being. Uh, we've obviously all been through a lot of change. We've had a disruption in our basic routines, sometimes given the way, you know, uh, time works, uh, everything seems urgent, uh, whether it's email messages or Zoom meetings, and there still is a lot of uncertainty. So I wanna emphasize how important it is for managers and supervisors to be effective in uh, managing people uh, in applying those soft skills that were always important in the past, but that are increasingly important today. And we do have training available and resources uh, for faculty and staff through our Staff and Faculty Counseling Center, and of course, uh, for students through CAPS. So um, expanding communications, assuring uh, that we um, foster a collaborative work environment, uh, and that equity is observed, uh, those continue to be key principles that we want to encourage everyone uh, to implement. And uh, finally, I uh, wanted to mention that our work group is developing a survey, uh, especially focused on administrators, managers, supervisors, including faculty and staff, uh, to make sure that we have a complete input uh, on the issues uh, that we are all facing and that we can provide guidelines that are responsive to those needs. So uh, please watch for that survey that will be forthcoming in the next few weeks. And I'm pleased now to introduce our next panelist. Uh, Renee Fortier is the Executive Director of Events and Transportation. Uh, her team uh, and Renee personally have been instrumental in reviewing the impact um, of telecommuting and other flexible practices 
on uh, transportation issues as well as the campus as a whole. Uh, so thank you, Renee, and I'll turn this over to you. Thank you. So thank you everyone. Um, and I wanna talk about planning for a phase return back to campus and how um, telework and phase work uh, play into that. So campus leadership has already acknowledged that telework has proven very effective during the closure and supports its continuation to mitigate campus density and parking demand and help employees balance work and personal responsibilities. So what are the reasons for continued telework flex work? First, as I said, it's proven effective. Um, more than 80% of managers surveyed have said that it's been more productive or as productive as before. Um, employees find that telework works for them as well. Significant mode shifts will occur if everyone comes back full throttle to campus. And that is because we found that among those surveyed, there was a reluctance to get back on public transit or other shared modes like carpooling. And this has a direct impact on the availability of parking for students. Also telework would enable easier physical distancing. But there is a caveat here. It can't all be bunched into Mondays and Fridays for full benefit. The days will have to be spread across the work week. So if we ensure that schedules are synchronized in our departments and smooth across the work week. It de-densifies the campus in two ways. First of all, each employee takes about 190 square feet per employee. So if we're going to have any physical distancing requirements in the fall, which are a real possibility, we need to have a less dense campus. Also, as I mentioned, employee parking decreases student parking availability. And that's because employees have the first call on parking. So setting up schedules that spread telework days across the work week can ensure a satisfactory level of de-densification, but that entails balancing the unit and the campus needs with the human dynamics elements. So I wanna show you an example here of what has been done um, with my own department to do blended scheduling. This is a department with many units, a uh, fairly large department, and what we did was for individual managers to complete their unit schedules and then blended them together to develop um, a shared departmental schedule across the week, paying particular attention to shared or adjacent spaces among units. The bottom line of that was that we were able to come up with a plan which allows us to get no more than 40% density on any given day. So um, this is really important because we have a lot of students coming back to the campus and we have a lot of employees who are going to have to be in person. So it, it isn't one size fits all, but for those of us who can continue some form of telework on a hybrid basis, it does allow the campus overall to be less dense. So here are some resources on the administrative vice chancellor website. There are resources for employees in terms of um, telework preparation checklists and ergonomic information, but there are also resources for managers on how to set up telework scheduling. And from the future of work work um, working group, as well as on the administrative vice chancellor's website, there will be new resources forthcoming, including new telework flex work agreement. And we are working on um, developing a checklist for managers as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Renee. For those that are interested in reviewing the slides from both presentations more closely, they will be posted on the COVID-19 website with the video of the town hall later today. As we move into the more specific Q&A portion of the town hall, I will ask Professor Morans to assist me in fielding the questions for our panelists, uh, which include the presenters and executive officer of EHNS, Michelle Sityar. As a reminder, for those on Zoom, please use the Q&A function to submit uh, questions, not the chat. One question that is on the minds of many of our staff is, will UCLA assist with the acquisition of home office furniture? Vice Chancellor and CFO Greg Goldman has a group working on developing a program to assist employees while they uh, work from home. 
The proposed program would provide a website where employees could select ergonomically appropriate desks and chairs and accessories for the home office. For those who will regularly be working from home three days a week or more, uh, may receive a subsidy from the campus to purchase the furniture. Computer equipment should be provided by the, uh, to the employee by uh, the department. Uh, and the employee though would be responsible for providing the appropriate internet services, recognizing the fact that uh, if they uh, isn't a need to commute, then they're able to reduce uh, the, co the cost associated with that. And it uh, seems like the appropriate uh, uh, shared balance. The final program parameters for this uh, should be available within a month. Uh, so please look for this. Uh, now to the other questions. Uh, per Professor Ma Morans, what's next? Uh, I have a question for um, Michelle, which is currently water fountains have been taken out of service. And um, the question is wondering what are the plans uh, about those and other shared areas like break rooms, water dispensers, microwaves, et cetera, once um, people start returning to campus? That's a great question. And we actually just discussed that with Dr. Ferrer at LA County yesterday when we met with her about uh, summer planning in general and our fall return. Uh, at this point, there is very limited information out there about how we go about reinstating our drinking fountains what testing and strategies for testing we should deploy for Legionella or other. Um, so at this time, we are continuing to have those conversations with Dr. Ferrer's team, and they have agreed to provide guidance on that front uh, as we come closer to being able to bring those back into service. Uh, in terms of disinfection, there was a recent announcement from CDC or publication rather that indicates uh, that surface cleaning may not be as effective as we originally thought at the onset of the pandemic. So we are having discussions now uh, within the infection control work group and other work groups within the task force to see how that might impact our uh, sanitization protocols um, as we return. Thank you, Michelle. Um, for Luby, uh, there's a question, will administrative department managers need to pre prepare return to work plans? And if so, is there an expectation that people should remain remote in fall if they are successfully performing their work remotely or is there an expectation that everyone should return to work? and work if possible. Uh, thank you, Michael. That's a really important question underlying a lot of the, the comments we've received. Um, I, I think unit managers really need to begin their planning process. Um, again, operational needs vary. Um, for academic units, uh, there may be a need to have specific plans that support faculty resumption of classroom teaching. Uh, other areas can continue to work remotely. So now is a good time to begin that planning process. And as we mentioned, we'll have a checklist um, to help supervisors and managers take a look at all the conditions that are available. But I do wanna emphasize again, that getting input uh, from staff members, from employees is really gonna be critical. Uh, and to have teams discuss what options will work well to ensure equity and to take into account the special needs of a particular unit. So this is an important process that I think uh, should be beginning now uh, and subject to change and flexibility down the road, but it's really critical to begin to think about that. Thank you. Thanks, Louie. So there are a lot of questions concerning uh, testing and symptom monitoring. So I'm just gonna pick one of them out um, for Michael and Michelle, whoever wants to take it, uh, because it sort of sums them up. Will employees who have completed their COVID-19 vaccine have to continue to submit a symptom monitoring survey every day that they come to campus? What about the weekly required COVID-19 test to those who have completed the vaccine still have to get tested every week? So that's a, that's a great question. And another question that uh, Michelle and I discussed with the county yesterday. And at the moment, those requirements are still there because it's not, the science is not clear as to whether or not uh, somebody who is vaccinated, um, who may have contracted the virus, uh, continues to shed the virus. 
and therefore uh, potentially creating a risk to others. So in the fall, there is an expectation that we will have much more information. And so hopefully in the fall, for those that are fully vaccinated, those activities uh, would be able to be uh, curtailed. At, um, but at the moment, we are still planning that those would continue. Michelle, do you wanna add anything to that answer? Sure, I actually uh, provided a written response to that in the Q&A, which I'll reiterate. Uh, we, the CDC uh, provides recommendations. However, we are still subject to the state and local public health orders. Uh, and at this time, there have been no changes to the symptom screening processes for institutes of higher education. Uh, even though CDC has already announced some um, lifting of restrictions for fully vaccinated individuals um, who can you know, gather in, in small groups uh, for private gatherings. Um, so we're gonna continue to have those conversations uh, within UCLA leadership as well as the county and see how things get modified and we'll modify our protocols accordingly. Thank you both. Um, so I have a couple of questions uh, that touch on things that were presented in the, uh, in the presentations, but I, I think may want a little bit more detailed responses. So either Luby or Joe um, or Renee, I think would be appropriate for these. Um, how exactly will worker preference be taken into account in return to campus planning? For instance, some workers may prefer to work on campus, some may prefer virtual work, and their living situations may have changed during the pandemic to make virtual work the better option for them, for instance, if they moved out of state. I'm happy to talk about that, Michael. We've thought about this a great deal. Um, the one thing that we're, we're, we're undertaking uh, some, some highly structured manager training, um, which will begin um, in May, and will be and, and it will continue through the lead up to the summer. And the managers will be um, encouraged and supported to think about best practices when it comes to um, negotiating um, each employee's uh, requests and uh, desires and needs in relation to flexible working. Um, and whether that flexible working is going to include an element of remote work or, or not, it will, you know, it will depend on the employee. Now, it's going to be a situation where there are delicate and sometimes difficult, difficult conversations that take place. Um, in any one unit, um, a manager or supervisor will have a lot of different proposals. We will be encouraging the managers to ensure that proposals can be forthcoming from all employees. Um, even if a manager believes in the first instance that um, flexible working is not going to be a possibility, nonetheless, we cannot foreclose or stop an employee for, from making suggestions about um, flexible work. Um, all employees should have that, should have that opportunity. Um, and in suggesting, making suggestions about flexible work, it may be that the employee the member of the workforce has ideas that a manager has not actually previously contemplated. So that these are going to be quite complicated, delicate negotiations that continue. Um, managers will have to um, uh, make it very clear that not all proposals can be accepted. They have to be very carefully reviewed. They have to be compared on the basis of equity. So there's got to be a lot of um, team unit work that goes into this. There's got to be a lot of de deliberation and we will be laying out and already have in our draft laid out some quite clear principles and guidelines about how to negotiate these um, flex work agreements. I'm, I'm wondering Luby if you might like to comment on that as well. Uh, thank you, Joe. I think you described it very well. Um, I think we need to keep in mind that many units have already experienced um, flex work or at least telecommuting in a very significant way. Uh, that learning experience, I think, is going to be the foundation for determining um, how things are working effectively. Uh, the change will be uh, probably moving towards a hybrid approach in some areas based on what Renee had described. Uh, and of course, when the campus begins to resume activities more fully in the fall, uh, we need to continue to be flexible and resilient in determining what makes sense. Uh, and I think it's important to keep in mind what the job functions are. Um, unit heads, managers are responsible to assure that 
uh, expectations are met. Uh, and managers do need to be using effective techniques uh, to address those issues while also uh, encouraging uh, the importance of work-life balance. So I think it, again, will uh, require some customization, uh, but I, we'll have the tools and resources available uh, that will be helpful. A, a very popular question on the li live chat is, will the campus allow employees to permanently work remotely if uh, they have been doing so successfully over the last 13 months? And are there any restrictions for employees to move out of state? Uh, and if there are, uh, what would those be? Uh, either that probably goes to Luby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, we don't see any restrictions for people working from out of state. Uh, the Office of the President has uh, developed some uh, rules about tax impact. Uh, and so far, uh, from what I've heard, um, it, and we've sometimes already had uh, employees working from out of state, I think that's probably going to continue. And of course, subject to approval uh, by the department. Um, I think we're going to see um, a lot of positive value related to that because it does expand our recruitment options uh, and employees or that we recruit often have difficulty moving into the Los Angeles area because of shortages of housing uh, or cost of housing. So I think this will actually uh, be a very positive element to use flex work for some of those out of state um, jobs. Can I comment Luby about out of country? Because we've been asked quite a few questions about that. And I believe Luby that uh, UCOP is working on policy around that. I think that's true, is that correct? Yes, they are developing policies. That's a lot more complicated. Yes. Um, there are not only tax issues, but liability issues. So I think more uh, guidance will be forthcoming in that area as well. Yes, thank you. And then one thing to keep in mind is if the individual is not in uh, Pacific Standard Time and the, their work really requires them to be available during Pacific Standard Time. Is that acceptable for a department to require them to work regardless of what time zone they're in to work in, in the Pacific Standard Time zone for their employment? Well, I, I would say that this is where flexible scheduling comes in. Uh, I don't think we can expect employees who you know, are on a three hour difference to uh, be working all, all night long. So uh, I, this is one of the challenging areas, I think for supervisors to consider uh, and to the extent that they can uh, set up meeting times, Zoom times, conversations uh, in a more flexible fashion or to approve um, alternate schedules. I think that those options are gonna help a great deal. But let's say that the individual is, is uh, responsible for taking calls between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. PST. I assume that they would have to work, they would have to adjust their, right? Because the university is in Pacific Standard Time. And if their job requirement, job description requires them to be uh, available working, answering phones during that time frame, I assume that they would still be required to do so. Uh, yes, if that's uh, specific to the job, uh, and that may be true for many non-exempt positions, uh, but for many exempt positions, there is flexibility in terms of a schedule that can accommodate um, both their location as well as the work that's required. But you're absolutely right. Uh, those kinds of specific circumstances definitely need to be taken into account. Great, thank you for clarifying that. Michael, sorry. Yeah, Luby, there are a couple of related questions, I think, that um, would go to you that <clears throat> speak to some other concerns. Um, if we want to work from home more than our department proposes, first, are there exception criteria defined to continue remote work? And 
who in fact is gonna make the final decision regarding who is to return to work and not return to work, campus HR, department HR. And I think they're linked in certain ways. Um, you know, what if there is in fact a uh, disagreement between a manager and an employee? What is the process there? Yeah, that, that, that's always a, a tough question. <laughs> um, I don't think uh, HRs either centrally or locally uh, can make those decisions. Uh, my suggestion would be if there's a difference of opinion, and this is similar to what uh, Joe described in terms of negotiating an effective approach, I, I think it needs to go up the chain of command. Uh, I think department heads may need to resolve those issues. Um, and even if it's not worked out at the department level, I think it would probably need to go to the dean or the vice chancellor to resolve. Uh, these are management uh, decision points. And while I strongly encourage uh, input, flexibility, uh, negotiation, uh, I think ultimately it's going to be a management decision, just like other uh, key employment decisions that we make all the time. Um, here's a question that I think would go to either Michael or Michelle. Um, I understand that employees requesting accommodation for continued remote work due to medical restrictions will be facilitated by EDMS. How are those requesting workplace adjustment due to age or personal circumstances going to be handled? I'll, I'll defer, yeah, I'll defer actually to Michelle or to Luby. Yeah. yeah yes, uh, we work closely with our disability management unit uh, that is led by Adrian Monka. Uh, and uh, accommodations are a very important component uh, of determining what makes sense in terms of remote work or work on site. So we'll continue that process. And there are guidelines uh, on our website, we, which we can send to you. Uh, for more information. Okay. And Michael, will UCLA continue to provide free COVID testing each week? Uh, we will continue to provide that for the foreseeable future. We are reevaluating what that might look like in the fall, uh, depending on if there's a vaccine mandate and everybody's required to be vaccinated and the case rates uh, remain very low, then uh, it may not be a requirement every week. We may uh, change to some type of statistical sampling or uh, other, other approaches uh, based on what the best uh, health guidance is at the time. But for now, testing uh, continues to be required on campus. Thank you. Um, here are a couple of questions that uh, I think would go to either Renee or to Michael. Um, if a majority of staff comes back to campus, will the UCLA Vanpool program be reinstated? So I can answer that one. Um, the Vanpool program is now set up to be directly with enterprise. It is something that was previously subsidized out of parking revenues, but the ridership fell off precipitously with COVID and it was something that could no longer be sustained. Um, there were bands that were maybe had 11 people before and went down to you know two or three. So it's a setup that is directly with enterprise and um, we're hoping that you know we will be able to have people continue in that program as people are less reluctant to have shared rides, but it is not something that um, the campus can any longer afford to subsidize when there are one or two people on an 11 passenger van. So it was an unfortunate impact of COVID. And if, de if department chairs um, or managers approve a hybrid schedule of on-campus and remote work for staff, have decisions been made regarding parking permits? Will staff still have to purchase a parking permit for the entire month, um, even though they'll only be on campus part of the time? There won't be a requirement to purchase a parking permit. Um, and I think the decisions are going to be based on how many days somebody chooses to do telework versus on site. So we do have the ability now with our parking portal to have purchases of permits by the day. 
And for somebody who is perhaps only coming into the office, you know, once or twice a week, that would probably make more sense than buying a, a parking permit. If somebody is coming in three or four days a week, uh, they may find it more convenient to simply continue with a parking permit. And since parking is on everyone's mind, um, including Renee's, uh, many staff canceled their parking in the last year to save money. Um, now that they'll need to uh, start parking again, do you know if the same allocations will be reserved for staff and faculty? For the most part, yes, but there have been some significant impacts to two different parking areas. Um, one is structure 18, the CHS structure, which is um, unfortunately has some issues that need to be repaired. So a lot of the space is out of um, commission. And the other is the subway construction has arrived at lot 36 and we lost a significant portion of that lot. So some people who are assigned there may need to be assigned elsewhere as well. That actually touches a, another question, Renee, which um, has to do with, are there plans to repurpose parking spaces for a future that will include mass transit to UCLA? It is something that has been done a couple of times in the past. Um, the Reagan Hospital was a large parking structure. The Luskin Conference Center was a parking structure. And we have very precious um, amount of land on our campus. And when there are needs for academic buildings or other healthcare buildings, then we may be giving up parking space for that. And with the subway coming, there will be less need for parking. That will come in 2027. So that's gonna be a very welcome addition to the campus to provide great opportunity to get to the campus without driving. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question would be, I think for Luby or Joe, um, uh, will your working group be making <clears throat> recommendations uh, for addressing workplace burnout for those who have been actively working on campus. I mean, a lot has been focused on people doing remote work, but obviously there have been burdens for those who have not been able to work remotely. I can say a few words, Michael, and I'm sure, sure. you can add to this considerably. Um, burnout is something that we're extremely aware of during the pandemic because we're in a kind of temporal blur at the moment. It often feels that one day is just leaking into another and we've been finding it hard to maintain boundaries on our work, whether we're on site or whether we're working remotely, you know, trying to make quite sure that we set up boundaries about the beginning of the day, taking proper breaks, making sure we get some exercise when we need to and making sure that we complete the day when we should complete the day. So there are, um, there, there are various um, uh, guidance points that we're offering in our, uh, our document that we're putting together. Our document's about 6,000 words at the moment. It's being augmented all the time. And uh, we are going to be very, um, uh, the management training is going to really be focusing on making quite sure that colleagues are um, not overworking and driving themselves into the ground. It's been, it's been, uh, we, we are very concerned, especially in the remote workplace, um, that it's very, very easy to lose track of one's time. And we're concerned about that. We're very, very concerned about it. Luby, did you want to come in on this? Uh, yes, thank you. I, I completely agree. Our staff and faculty counseling center already has made available sessions, not only for individuals, but for groups. So there's a lot of training uh, that's out there. And we do encourage uh, individuals to seek those resources. Uh, burnout is, is a key issue. Uh, overload, uh, use of time. Uh, there are lots of uh, techniques that can be utilized to help mitigate those issues. And there is a recognition, I think nationwide, uh, of the importance of well-being um, and, and mental health. So uh, I would encourage everyone to look at the resources on our website. And if you have questions, please let us know. If I just want to say one further thing on this, Michael, um, we're, we're really having to focus a lot in relation to FlexWork on expectations, right? What are reasonable expectations in relation to performance targets and so on and so forth. 
And um, I, I, th I think given what we've been going through, this is certainly my experience as an instructor, I have probably been working harder and more exhaustive, much more exhausting way in terms of the delivery of, of my teaching than ever before in my career at UCLA. And um, I've had to check in with myself on various occasions. Do I really need to do this much in order to deliver this particular class? And I think that's been affecting loads of different colleagues across the camp, well, across the whole workforce in different units. It's been just very, very easy to um, start trying to perform, going the extra mile to make quite sure we're doing absolutely everything to, the, to, our, uh, to our best possible potential. And we're actually ending up on quite a few occasions getting into a situation where we're burning out. Um, Luby, what are the expectations of staff who are simultaneously caring for faculty members impacted by COVID-19 <clears throat> and fulfilling their staff responsibilities with the university? Will any accommodations be put in place to support staff still in these complex situations as we return to working in person? Uh, yes, I think this will be covered in our uh, work group final report. Uh, we're very concerned about the need to make sure that the uh, environment uh, is supportive of individual needs as well as unit. Uh, expectations. So I, I think more information will be forthcoming. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to do a survey to make sure we have input on the kinds of challenges that everyone is facing. So we really appreciate um, all the ideas on this and look forward to having additional uh, conversation and recommendations that can be helpful. And I guess we have time for one more, which I'll um addressed to Michael and or Luby, which is um, how can staff members voice their concerns to campus leadership if they feel they are not being addressed at the departmental level? Well, they, they certainly can uh, contact us in Campus Human Resources. Uh, they can also confer with the staff assembly. We have an excellent uh, leadership group in our UCLA staff assembly, who's always open uh, to staff comments and input. Uh, so there are many different channels in addition to obviously uh, the channels going up to management uh, through each organization. So we do encourage uh, people to uh, contact us. We can help advise. We may not be able to make all the decisions but we're there uh, to support the staff needs. Well, thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Um, Hey, we're about out of time. Uh, so again, I'd like to thank all the panelists. I'd like to thank the chancellor uh, and all of you who have attended uh, this, this town hall. As always, we will try to post as many answers to questions uh, later as we can. And um, we'll post both the presentations and the um, video from the conference. And uh, I hope that you all have um, a good rest of your day. Thank you for, um, for everything. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you all uh, being here and for all the work that those of you that are doing, those that are working on campus, as well as those that are working remotely. So thank you for uh, keeping UCLA uh, working effectively during this period. Be safe and uh, have a good week.